Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today I was actually going to be bringing two different reviews, one of each of these two keyboards. But instead, I had to turn this into a PSA. Um, as some of you might know uh, from our personal interactions, I spent the last three decades of my life uh, working in IT. Um, practically every different position uh, from developer all the way to system admin, database engineer, software architect, you know, so on and so on and so on. Anyway, um, to make long, long story short, because I don't want this to get too technical, um, I've been a uh, Linux user for over a decade and only use Windows machines when I truly have to. And for quite a few years now, uh, going on probably about eight years, I've been able to work without a Windows physical workstation and use a virtual machine that ran all the software that I needed to run, did everything that I needed to do. So I um, only recently uh, repurposed one of my old laptops to run Windows 11 so that I could install software and test it and I wanted it to be separate from my primary machine and I wanted it to be something that I have an image of uh, completely fresh install so at any time I want to I can just roll back to that and I'm good that out of the way <clears throat> here's two keyboards that are listed on Amazon and I, I am right I'm really trying to do it this the short way around but this is two keyboards that showed up on Amazon not too long ago, both from a company called iRock. I-R-O-K. So that you guys can see, this is the box for the FE75. That's their logo. <clears throat> now, when I first saw these two keyboards, actually I was first alerted to this one, because somebody asked me if I had taken a look at it yet, and I was like, no, I haven't seen it, it actually looks nice, and I tried to figure out from the photos, what other keyboard it could be because most of the times in this particular you know in stock range a lot of these boards are white labeled boards and, you know they go by many different names so this one i wasn't able to place it's a 75 percent it's actually quite well uh, dampened if it had um, lube switches it would actually sound very decent for stock i mean it doesn't sound all that bad but it definitely needs some work and it's a three mode with 3000 milliamp hour battery that i mean it's i think it's got reds in there a decent 75 percent you know wireless this sells right now at list for now this one lists for $52.99, but it has a 15% off coupon, which I've seen since since I found the listing over a week ago, uh, which I used to place the order. So it has a 15% off. So it comes. This one comes to $45. Now, a 75% that's well dampened, 3,000 milliamp hour, three mode, hot swappable, uh, programmable LEDs. Well, we'll get there. It kind of like hmm then this one I saw also from them which I placed the order at the same time I did that one because I was pretty sure I knew what keyboard this was and I was right when I received it as soon as I was able to remove the shroud I knew that this was a CIY X77 TKL now this keyboard does sell from CIY the cheapest I've ever seen it is 45 44 99 45 bucks um, on sale it normally lists for 52.99 on Amazon um, why it's a decent TKL it's wired only but it can really easily be made to sound well and I didn't have one prepared or let you let let you hear it for a second but I'm trying to not focus too much on the actual hardware the hardware here is not the issue the issue is when you go to download the software now I had um, <clears throat> this is the first keyboard that I've seen that does this and this is where I kind of got started going down this path Either on the either one of these keyboards, you'll see 
even though that's, I guess that's their logo. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but it's on both keyboards. And you'll see that that's the sub legend to the escape. Well, if you hit, hit function escape on a Windows machine, it opens up a command prompt or a run prompt. And it spits a whole bunch of stuff out at it. I haven't caught the whole thing because it's a macro. And then it opens up the website and starts downloading. Um, depending on how your browser is set up, it either asks you, prompts you to download or starts downloading the software driver for um, these keyboards. Now it's an all in one, so you can you use the same one for either keyboard. Um, when I first downloaded it and went to install, it gave me an error. It errored out. I wish I would have screen captured it, but I didn't. But then I ran it again. It took longer than it should have. It's a, it's a this is a, only a, I want to say a three or four year old i7 on this laptop. So it's not a slouch. It has 16 gigs of RAM. So um, I was like, what's going on? I was getting ready to go look for the process and kill it when it finally popped up. And then it popped up three times during the installation, asking me basically to make firewall rules um, to outgoing one incoming and I disallowed it and it kept like just basically wanted me to do it and finally I went through the setup so as soon I mean it obviously it, it doesn't ask you it just goes ahead and sets up under your startup um, and runs you know right away and it's gonna run every time unless you disable it or uninstall it um, it's going to run automatically every time you start now there is many software packages including many from companies we all know and trust that send what's called telemetry data and this is primarily used for keeping analytics on any bugs issues performance um, and you know general use like you know how many how often is it being used how many times if it's eating process you know it's eating resources so on and so forth crash analytics kind of thing um, a lot of software applications have that built in because it allows software developers to you know kind of get a general idea of what's going on without having to ask users you know not every user is going to report every time they get an error so if there's a particular edge use case that that has happened with that software it'll send you know details of the report it may send something about the hardware if that's you know pertinent to what's going on and but it doesn't you know send any identifying information necessarily it may have an id that ties it into that particular machine or that particular um network card or mac id or depending they can they can tie it into several different things but usually software like that it opens up starts a connection sends a packet or two or it sends a few packets you know basically reporting back and then it closes that connection and then it continues working on your you know computer and unless something you know exceptional like it crashes or anything like that and even if it crashes it's not going to report back unless you have a tray icon that's got you know a separate process and that one doesn't crash it's not going to report back until you open it back again so so yes software a lot of software phones home but what they phone home with is information to help make the software run better. That said, this software, and I'll uh, edit in here screenshots, um, not only does it open up and run, it establishes a connection over port 80. Um, and I'll say that other software that I've seen do this, most of the time, it does it over uh, either a, an an unknown mapped port, like not 80 or 443, but just some random port, but it is going over HTTPS or some uh, layer of encryption. Port 80 is unencrypted HTTP traffic. So, but not only that, it opens up a port on your computer. And one of those rules that it was asking to make is basically turn on UPnP NAT and allow traffic to come in to your computer that's running this software driver. Um, now both of these software drivers also have the musical effect. Now the musical effect is supposed to take music in the background and adjust your light patterns to match that. But that means it has a microphone in it. But <clears throat> I still need to dig further into it.
but at the same time I didn't want to compromise that Windows PC um, or my network and I'm probably going to have to set up some sort of uh, caged environment to where I can ensure that whatever I do, and I'll probably just do it on an old, old laptop, something that I don't really care if it can get screwed up. But, and I want to capture every single thing that's going on. But the one thing that I can say that it does is that it opens the connections and it maintains it and it continues to transmit data. Uh, so it doesn't matter whether the keyboard's plugged in or not. And if you have another keyboard plugged in and you plug in this one, it'll pop up, you know, because it's running in the background. But it is, that tray icon is constantly connected to the server IP, and I'll show in the, um, in the screenshots that I edited it. it. It maintains a connection to that server continually sending data, and it wants to open up. Now, I, <clears throat> I did catch this at first. I run a Pi Hole, and a Pi Hole is just a service that runs Raspberry Pis, but it can run on anything that acts as your DNS server for your entire network. It's primarily used to send ads into the black hole, so where you don't see a lot of the, the, the ads that you would normally on practically any website nowadays. But it also, because it uses RSS, so you can subscribe to your own list. It's a uh, maintainable list of bad actor domains and, and host names, so that if so if one of your computers on your network happens to ask for the IP address of a host name that, that is within those block lists, um, you're just going to get returned back 127.0.0.1, which is localhost, meaning that whatever process was trying to communicate out of the network is just going to hit a brick wall, per se, because they can't get directions. DNS translates domain names and host names into IP addresses and that's how TCP IP works by finding out what IP address it is and then figuring out the rest to find the routes to get there. The long and the skinny of it is I don't want to get too much into the weeds. I'm providing screenshots the IP address it's an Alibaba server and Alibaba, Alibaba. it's kind of like the Amazon for China you know so they have cloud services and you know, companies can use them or whatever, but I ask myself, what is it sending and why is it maintaining a constant connection to a server in China? So, and just, I, I know that a lot of people are like, oh, don't download the driver for the Fecker or for this keyboard or that keyboard. Yes, I do know that a lot of these packages, the installers and the software itself can trigger what are most of the times, not all of the times, but most of the times, false positives. And what I have found in many of the situations, if I dig down into it, it's actually that because the software these companies are using, they're white-labeled hardware as well as white-labeled software. The software is basically like, I mean, all right, tie it to this model so it doesn't work with any other, the other ones that are, you know, within this model range, as well as let's you know add our logo and either limit some features or whatever i mean they, they could change the interface to a certain degree but i'm sure if you've bought more than one keyboard for more than one company you may have noticed that wow that interface looks a lot like the interface for that one because they're from the same actual manufacturer and different companies are white labeling them under different model names these other programs when they because they've been around for so long um and i mean they update and to the degree that they need to, like, okay, this library can no longer be used. But for the most part, they're using um, out-of-date Windows system methods. You know, uh, the, the, inner, the innards of Windows, what it exposes to programs so that they can communicate through system libraries. Um, and a lot of these false positives that you see with either the installers, because sometimes it's actually with the installer and not with the actual program, but sometimes it's with the program as well because you know, the method that they use to save themselves to the taskbar is one from 12 years ago and no one really should be using it because it is a white label software and it still works. They just, you know, use it as is. And a lot of those times it's basically throwing up those, those virus alerts or malware because it's using outdated 
Windows methods and it just made that particular antivirus package think that, okay, well, since it's using outdated system libraries that are still in use, you know, to maintain usability and legacy code, um, it could be trying to exploit a vulnerability that we don't know about. And that's why you get that, you know, that, hey, there's malware or there's trouble with this or something to that effect. And I'm not saying to ignore those. I'm just saying that it can happen. Um, you can run stuff in quarantine. There's different ways to do it. And I could probably do an entire video about that. And I've already talked more than I wanted to. All I really want to do, I'm not going to tell anybody not to buy this keyboard um, or either one of them. But this one is definitely worth more than what it's selling for. Um, if I had to guess, it'd be a $70 to $90 keyboard from based on what it has. Um, like I said, it sounds pretty decent, but it's very well built. It has some thick silicone between the plate and the PCB as well as underneath the battery. So now this one is, like I said, it's the X77. Physically, it appears to be the same. I still have to open it up and take a look, but I really don't even want to give these boards any more attention um, than needed at this point, to be quite honest, because I, I have noticed all of a sudden they're making the rounds. Everybody is getting one and making a review and Amazon buying, giving them out. And I mean, obviously marketing pushes for products. I get it. I get it. But they're too cheap. And the software is, it's sketchy. It's real sketchy. And the fact that it opens up and maintains a connection to a server in China, as well as opens up a port incoming on your computer for a server from outside the network to talk or set commands. I mean, I know that that process is only running under the user while I'm an administrator of user, so what can I do? Do anything an administrator can't so You see the conundrum? So I, I personally, I don't think that these... I mean, I think the the keyboards are fine. Unfortunately, I tried to uh, to use this one with the X77 software. It does not find it. And, I mean, I checked while I was on there at the X77 software. It didn't even try to make an internet connection to anything. Um, it just popped up and said, Your, that keyboard's not plugged in. But if this would at least work with the X77 software, I'd be like, okay. Because I think the issue is with the software, not with the actual hardware. Now, it, since it's a TKL though, it doesn't really need to be plugged in. This one though, I mean, some people may not like the way that they have, I mean, got insert up here, I'm sorry, but that should be delete. And then the uh, lower of the function is a uh, scroll lock. Then we've got the delete here, page up, page down. Well, some people are gonna wanna change that. Delete, insert, would be mine. Page up, page down, home or end. Uh, or even print screen, depending on what I'm using it on. But I'm going to want to program these while I need to use the software. And even on, like I said, the, the Windows machine that I have has a lot of things turned off, telemetry, everything like that. And, um, and it's pretty limited as to what it can do already. It's not in a full quarantine because I do have to, you know, like share the video files that I'm going to be, or the, the screenshots that I'm going to be adding into this video. But even then, I, I just don't even like taking the chance. I mean, I deleted it, I scrubbed it. There's, it's not running anymore, so it doesn't seem to leave anything behind from what I can see. And that, I mean, if it did, I'm almost positive that an antivirus or even Microsoft Defender, if you want to call it an antivirus, would catch that activity and flag it and let you know because that is definitely um, activity that those systems or antivirus security systems are meant to look out for those type of patterns but i i mean i hate to sound like an old man but if a deal sounds too good to be true there's probably a reason for it the x77 just goes for 52.99 uh, right now with the sale that it has this one's going for 30 uh oh. It is $39 with 15% on it. So it's much cheaper than, than the X77. Why? Well, the X77 doesn't have software that connects to a server and stays connected. This one, I don't know what 
white label keyboard this is if anybody out there does um, I definitely love to know because I would like to get uh, this kit um, and if I do start messing with these I'm gonna see if I can actually JTAG into them try to download the firmware um, or off of off of a real one for the X77 and try to flash with real firmware so that I can use it as an X77 instead of the Xyron um, but I actually the one thing I did forget I am um, so I bought these from Amazon myself and I was I have not I mean I don't know if anyone else has please um, leave a comment below if you have but I have never seen any keyboard have a pre-programmed shortcut link to go to their specific website to download a driver I mean that's just it almost feels intrusive and it's it, I had written them an email the seller I rock store on Amazon about this and a couple of other questions that I had because I was already starting to have a sneaking suspicions before that before I actually started monitoring what the um, the executable was doing as far as network communications um, I reached out to them with a few questions and only kindly you know half ass mentioned oh I you know I, I like to review keyboards I didn't you're not allowed to send links anyway but I didn't mention I was on YouTube didn't mention anything so um, the next day, I woke up to an email that said, um, please confirm these are your order numbers. And, okay, I figured they just wanted to confirm I was a real, you know, I'd actually bought this, uh, both of these keyboards. And later on that day, I received a refund for both those keyboards. And just a curt, short email that said, sorry for your troubles. Here's a refund. Have a nice day. I responded back. I've responded back three times now, saying, could you please answer my questions I appreciate the refund that's not what I was looking for I was looking for the answers to my questions um, specifically can I get rid of this is there any way I can get rid of it they won't even answer my questions now they're just I mean I don't know if there's a mute on the Amazon seller side but if there is they've muted me because I've asked several times I mean I've repeated my questions I haven't been rude or anything but I've been persistent over the last few days and I've heard nothing back after the we provided a, a refund. Have a nice day. I mean, I, what what companies do that? I mean, especially if they're pushing to get these things sold, or you know, are the hardware just a way to do something else nefarious? Allegedly, I need to dig in further. But for right now, I'm just going to leave these alone. I wanted to give the PSA. Uh, you guys see the screenshots. You guys can look for yourself. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys this PSA. Again, I'm not telling anyone not to buy these keyboards because they're a pretty good price. Um, and I mean, if you're going to be on Linux or Mac, I don't think it's going to be that much of an issue. They don't have a Mac software that I could find. So you're going to be stuck with that, though there is no Mac switch. Though I know this one does work on Mac just fine. I forgot if it has a key combination to switch. Anyway, I didn't want to focus too much on the keyboards. If you guys do want me to do, you know, my actual, my regular review, I've basically already filmed them, um, all except for the sound test. So I can put them out there, but I feel that that would be perhaps promoting, well, maybe not so much this one, except if you do want the X77, it's, you know, a good chunk off on the you know, about what 40 percent 35 percent off of what it usually sells for but this keyboard i can see a lot of people wanting to buy it again if anybody knows what this is there's the pocket for the 2.4 um it has this this little ridge that i've seen on a few keyboards uh, including the the ltc nimble back uh, 631 and um the rk68 plus another one that i can't think of right now but it seems similar but it's not exactly the same i i haven't seen this keyboard before so if you guys have seen this keyboard different colorway um maybe bare bone it has the light there between the escape and the first uh, f1 row blockers um it has the bluetooth 2.4 and the usb port right there and it has the pocket right here as well as two sets of feet so uh, if you guys know what keyboard that sells at under a different model or even a different region, 
I'd like to actually get a hold of. Uh, like I said, if I could find one that has software that's not connecting to servers on Alibaba's cloud, I'd uh, I'd like to mod it because I actually kind of like this keyboard. I'm really getting disappointed um, at the issue with CDU keyboard. I really, really want to like three of them faulty so far. Um, this keyboard I saw when I first took it out of the box, I was like, ooh, this is nice. I liked how it felt. I liked how it sounded stock. I was already pictured in my head the, the, the mods I was going to do to it, but now I'm just like, hmm. Because, I mean, it's one thing to have Windows software that kind of sucks, but at least at the end of the day it gets the job done and it's not, you know, doing anything, you know, that it shouldn't be doing. But it's a whole other thing saying, well, okay, well, I'm going to have to use this without software and just deal with the mappings that it's got on there and make sure not to hit function escape because it's going to go to the website and it passes more data than just the, the URL. So... I don't know if it's sending the serial number, what, what? I mean, your IP, your Mac, your, who knows? But anyway, I hope that uh, that at least um, this informs some people. I mean, if you're if you're curious, I mean, Amazon Prime. If you have a defective product, you can send it back to them. I would say this would qualify as that. So if you guys want to take a look. For yourselves, you know, open up Wireshark or um, any one of a number of uh, capture software out there. I think I'm using TCP Wire for this one. Um, it's from a tool set that I've used for a long, long time. But it's actually a Microsoft company now. It used to not be. Anyway, if you guys want to try it out and do some reporting on it, I may come back to it. I may not. Um, providing what I provide here now. Is it sending anything nefarious? I don't know. But does a keyboard driver need to always be running and always be connected to an outside server and have an open connection on this hidden port below 10,000 and allow a, a punch through on the UPnP using UPnP on your router? Probably not. So logic to me dictates or Occam's razor. I mean, the simplest explanation is, well, it's connected to the internet and stays connected because it needs to send data. It needs to transmit. So, I don't know if, if it's <laughs> with all of the balloon news that we've been hearing lately, but, I mean, not for nothing, there are companies that do nefarious things. I may as well, you know, shed some light on this. If I found another keyboard that had this issue, I would report it immediately, but... Uh, so many times people have come, oh, don't install that software, it has a virus. And I'm like, oh, good, let me go find it. And I go and I see, and I get a pop-up, and I get a warning. But then when I dig further and further and see the error, and then see what's actually going on, but it's just asking for a method that's like 12 years old. It, that was a new method when, you know, this was written in, you know, .NET 2, <laughs> uh, or whatever, you know, the client was written in. So... And, and it's just, it's poor programming, but it's not nefarious. Is it sloppy? Could it leak something? Who knows? Probably, but it's not actively doing something that isn't necessary. A keyboard does not need to be connected to the internet directly. The software for it does not need to be connected to the internet. So I'm not being paranoid. I'm just reporting what I found. So anyway, like I said, unfortunately, as much as I would like to, there's just, to me, I don't want to give any more time, um, especially anything that might come off as positive, because if it does end up doing something bad to somebody's computer, I would feel responsible, especially if they saw my video about it. So if you see my video about the IROC 75, I'm not going to be sitting here praising it and ignoring what's going on with the software. I'm going to tell you what's going on with the software. I'm just not going to do a review of the keyboard because... I don't think it's the right thing to do for the community. If you guys disagree with me, please let me know. But this is how I feel about it. Um, if you guys want more information or you really want me to, to do a thorough and get geeky, I, I'll do it. I'll probably just post it on my regular personal channel because it, it'll be really down the hole of Windows systems, library, 
it would be technical because, I mean, that's what I'll have to do in order to not only get to what the packets are, what information is traversing, uh, but also just to, you know, crack the nut open, so to say. So if you guys want me to do that, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys today and uh, wish you guys all a happy week. And today is uh, Italian food day. So I'm looking forward to having some lasagna tonight. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And until the next transmission, which will be a mod, I have a whole bunch of mods coming up. So I know I've been stuck in review mode for a while. I am setting a schedule. So some mods will be coming up. I'm going to be taking some cheaper boards and seeing what I can do with them. So until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.